Welcome to Word on the Streets with JP. Yeah, we are so elated that you decided to make us a part of your morning, evening, afternoon, whatever, whatever time you're listening to us, because we're probably on YouTube, but that's okay. We have an awesome show lined up for you today. We're going to get into some of God's principles. I'm excited. Those of you who are experiencing a situation where you're elevated on your spirituality with Christ and he sends you a task to go after a soul that's lost, don't be afraid because God has you. You're going to be just fine. Now, I know it was the Holy Spirit who told me to read this because the Lord is having us Christians gravitate towards each other. He didn't promise that you weren't going to be ridiculed. He didn't promise that you, that you weren't going to be broke. He didn't promise none of that. For he warns you in his word that you will go through trial and error. He did say that people will say and do things to hurt you because you follow me. And what does he say when you do go through? He says, count it all joy. Right. He says, be happy. We don't go through what we go through for ourselves. We go through what we go through for other people. So when we go through it and come out on the other side of it, then we'll have the tools needed to help someone else. So if you've never been an alcoholic, you can't talk to an alcoholic right. about recovery. You can't. You can't do it. You just can't do it. If you've ever been homeless, if you've never been homeless, you can't talk to a homeless person about homelessness and how they should feel. You can't. To piggyback off what you said, he'll never put more on you than you're able to stand. He weighs us down with these things just so we can go through it to help someone else on the other end. Exactly. Yeah, a good word. That was a good word. Yeah. If you're a believer and you're going through because of your faith, man, be happy. Be happy that you are such a value to the kingdom of God that the kingdom of darkness would continue to assault you. Yeah, it's an amazing thing. Different level, different devil. So, man, mm -hmm. if you're going through something that you, man, this is unbearable. When you come out of that thing, you're going to be a powerhouse mm -hmm. in whatever area that is. And so life is, is a continuation of different levels of faith. He says faith to faith, glory to glory. Man, I've been homeless. I know about it. I've been substance abuser. I know about it. I can talk to folks about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not with empathy, with sympathy. Right. Because I've, I've, I've seen it. I've endured it. I've come through it. And that's what we got to do, man. Instead of killing our soldiers on the battlefield mm -hmm. because they have a problem that they're going through, we need to pick them up and bear the weight with them. Ain't that right? Yes, that is so true. Yeah. We kill our soldiers on, you know, that's what church mm. <coughs> The Sister Jenkins. Mm. Look, Pearl. <laughs> look, look, look at her in, in that in that old short skirt. Um, you don't know if that's all she got, right. but she's in the house. Exactly. She's in the house. Anyway, so. Exactly. No, and that's so true because yeah. I'm, I'm going to actually tell you all two things. Now, there was a little girl, and, and she was just, she was scared. She was trying to hide from the same spirit that I was running from in my dream. Mm -hmm. I came back. And I saw her, and I knew my way around the house, and I knew how to get her out. It was hard, but I knew how to protect her mm -hmm. because I was in that situation. And so at the end, I don't know where he went, but I know that the family and me and the little girl, we were all right. That dream, what that dream meant to me, and I feel it in my spirit because I know I was always told God is going to use you to minister to women, minister to those who or laws who need help, especially the young women that, you know, dealing with love issues. And it's so funny how I was helping a little girl, so I think that represented, well, not even think, I feel it in my spirit, that represented a, a young soul, a young lady who's in need, who's searching, but she's but she's dealing with spirit that she doesn't know is, is out to harm her, and I'm right. coming in, and I see through him because yeah. the Lord put me in the situation where right. I, I learn about that. That spirit of discernment is right. one of the, the gifts that God gives us. We know danger when it don't look like danger. It's mm -hmm. like, uh-oh, ain't going <laughs> over there, or I'm going to go right through it. So, yeah, man, that, that's a great dream. That's a great dream. You are empowered to help. See, when people when people start seeing how, how transparent you are, 
and how much you love God. You do. I, I know this child personally. This child loves some God. <laughs> I, and do, loves some I do. Jesus. I do. I do. A and, whole and, lot. And so I believe that your following is going to be so big. Because he says, if, if I lift it up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. And so I believe that you're going to be so popular, so attractive. I don't mean that in a sensual kind of way. I mean, <laughs> it's going to be attracting. Mm -hmm. Attracting even to, it, though, to those People that are yet to be believers, they're going to be attracted to you. You've got everything it takes. You're, you're pleasant on the eyes. You speak well. You love God. That's all it takes. And you're malleable. You're usable. So I believe that this is your this is your ministry. I believe that this is your calling. You, you. <laughs> We're the and greater crew. We are. Yeah. We're and greater things we'll do than he was able to do when he was on earth talking about Christ. And he said, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, man, if you're a believer and you're going through, get to the place in your faith where you can't be shaken. Get to the place in your faith where your flesh means little, and that's the battle. Get to the place in your faith where you know in the city of your knower that God is true to his word. He is. He says he's not a man that he should lie. He said, he, I ain't got a lot. I ain't scared of y'all. <laughs> you know? I'm I don't have to impress y'all. Right, right, yeah. right. I'm God. <laughs> and so we need to find out who we are in God, in Jesus, and adopt that same attitude. I don't care. I can't, I'm like my pastor. I can't tell you how much I don't care. And I don't say that in a negative sort of way in regards to people. But what people think of me, I don't care because I know what God told me to do. In regards to time, I don't care because God needs time to work out people, places, and things for us. All things work together for the good of those who love him, which I do, and are called according to his purpose. It's an amazing thing how we just live in a place as a believer, carefree. I'm going to stop saying what we don't care. I'm going to say carefree. Right. And he does say cast, chunk, throw, all your cares onto him, for he can handle them, for he cares for us. Not just cares for us like, like a butler would care for you, but I'm talking about cares for you, every need. I don't know who needed that. I don't just, it just flowed like water. On Moses ran from his calling the whole time. He's like, mm -mm, I ain't going. I, I stutter. I can't even talk. And I'm not going. And God was like, you go. Yeah, you go. Yeah, you go. I'm gonna send Aaron with you. He's like, yeah, but um, thank you, but I'm not going. He's like, yeah, you go. We'll use Aaron. And you know, Aaron you never, Aaron never said word. a word. Yes, Ever said a word. He never said a word. When God gives you a vision mm -hmm. and a task, He gives you provision. So just because you're a baby Christian, not you, but <laughs> y'all out there, be afraid to be obedient because you think that you're limited in your faith. You're not. Man, you just got to yield that thing to the Holy Spirit. Even now, I've been saved for a long, 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 long time. And I I tell you, man, I'm so carefree. i got to ask God about everything. I might be in a business meeting, or I might be selling something. Not that, but, I'm, you know, that's what I do for a living. <laughs> yeah, I'm a consultant. Yeah, sure. I might be selling my services. So I'll just quiet and say, Lord, I'll just, I'll just give this to you. If what I expect comes to pass, I'll praise you. And if it doesn't come to pass, I'll praise you. Because all things work together for the good of those who love God. You know, I was supposed to go back to D.C. last weekend. And so things happened, and I wasn't able. And so the people that were expecting me in D.C., they were like up in arms. You're coming, you're coming. Oh, my God, you're not coming. Oh, my God. And I'm, I'm going, no, I'm not coming. You know. Things happen on this end. So why get upset and excited? And God handles it all, no matter how it happens. If you're late to an important meeting, give that thing to God. You're on your way. I'm going to make it. La, la, la. I'm going to make it. I'm on time. I'm early. And then 285 is a parking lot when you pull on it. Uh, on that thing. And you're like, oh, Lord. You know? <laughs> and then that's right then. It's not that you react. It's how you react. Are you reacting in faith right. or are you reacting in doubt? Mm -hmm. If God's word is true, 
which it is, right. he says, all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called to his purpose. So you pull out on the 285, it's a parking lot. You know you're going to be there. You, you can see four miles up the road if there's an accident and there ain't nothing moving. And you just say, Lord, whatever's going on, thank you. You know? And so if that's for me, it'll be there for me. Thank you. And if, it, if the opportunity is gone when I get there, that must not have been for me. Thank you. And, and you call it a day. And a lot of times, if you press your way, you'll get there and they'll say, we are so glad you made it. None of the other candidates made it because 285 is a parking lot. I don't see how you made it. And then you see the miracle in it. Mm -hmm. And then you get the job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, man, everything is approached in faith. Mm -hmm. and, and we enjoy God's benefits. We're his benefactors because of how we receive his promise. And you were saying how people complicate God's word mm -hmm. and they complicate what we should do. You know, the only thing he says is believe. Mm, right. Believe. It's not <laughs> rocket science. He says only believe. That's it. But you got to have something to believe. You got to get into this word. You got to ingest it, digest it, throw it up, <laughs> pick it back up, chew it back up. You got to know this thing. You do. Yeah, you do. We, we did it in math. We, we learned our, our trigonometry, our calculus. We learned our statistics. We learned all of that stuff. I wasn't the strongest in those subjects, by the way. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> but we learned it in order to, to pass to the next level. Now, okay, I'm an associate's level student. Now I'm a, a bachelor level student. Now I'm a master level student. Whew. That's why we got to be. That's how we got to look at this word. Mm -hmm. You won't know what you're what what you're fighting with if you don't know this word. Mm -hmm. And you can't know it. Just calling on the name of Jesus is enough. But it helps if you can help him with it. You can remind him of his word. I'm glad you called him. Please read my word, child. Please read my word. Do something. I'm just saying. Just calling on me all day. He just got his You just calling on me all day. I thought I finished it over there at Calvary. You got me working overtime. Right. The right hand of the Father, and and you got me in intercession for you, cause you don't know your word, <laughs> right? Yeah, the Bible says that Jesus is continually in intercession for us, for those who are drinking milk <laughs> instead of, instead of right. eating steak. Yeah, yeah, he's six. He's like, Father, help my help him, help him. That's that's probably his that's probably his prayer. Lord, help him. <laughs> Daddy, help him, help him. Right. Yeah, big God, they help him. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it does say in the word, though, to those who, who are unaware or don't even know how to pray to the Lord, the Holy Spirit will pray for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. It does say in the word. Yeah. And make intercession and through utterings and groanings on your behalf. So uh -huh. when you don't have words, when it hurts so deep, it's just groan, moan. So simple, yet it's so complex. Our part of it is simple. God completed the complex part by enduring the pain of losing his son or, or receiving the, the perfect sacrifice through his son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So he did Ooh, the trigonometry of Love life. Mm -hmm. And so the only thing we got to do is the, the add and subtract it, man, for real. Yeah. Only believe. Trust him with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. Lean on him and not onto your own understanding. Walk by faith Amen. and not by sight. Amen. And you got to you got to walk. Okay, if you are, if you are a believer, God gave me a dream when I first got saved, and I said I endured a pain that was so deep that I just <clears throat> cried out to him and asked him a question. I asked him, "What do I have to look forward to if I continue to walk this thing out?" It is too hard for me. And he showed me what was at the end of my road. So I'm eight foot tall and bulletproof. I don't, you, man, you can come out there with a howitzer or a, a, or a, a sawed off shotgun and I'll walk right up to you because he showed me what's going to happen with me. Wow. You just got to trust him like that. You do. You got to trust him like that. I know 
that can't nothing harm me. I just know it because he because he showed me the end of me. Come bring it on. You know, I mean, I'm just I'm just that's the way I, I feel. And, and so that's the kind of faith that um, it took 30 years to obtain trial and error, trial and error. And then he complicated by saying, oh, yeah, okay, I should I should believe without wavering. Oh, I just wavered. And we do that in our mind instead of just saying, I'm just going to trust you and just leave it leave it on the yeah. table. Leave it there. Yeah. And, and, and don't worry about it. Don't think about it. Don't, don't, don't remind yourself of it. Take everything that reminds you of it and put it away. Okay, you lost a child, you lost a husband, you lost a wife, you had a bad divorce, um, whatever. Okay, and so every time I see my, my baby face, I just want to, then you need to put that picture away and keep it moving, always forward, moving forward. That's what he, he demands of us. And to piggyback off of what you're saying, yeah. I believe that in my spirit, and that is so true. I knew it before, but especially on this day when a young lady, I don't even, I didn't even know her. I know her now because of it, but I didn't even know her. And she walked in the bathroom just, just boo-hoo crying, and she went right to me. That's how I knew it was the Lord, because how did her spirit know to just come right to me, you know? And she was thirsty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know she's uh, a child of God. Yeah. You know? And people used to say that in the old Baptist church, too. Yeah, don't shake brother so-and-so hand. You know he, he he's strange different. You know, if you're infilled with the Holy Spirit, can't know the Spirit inhabit you. Exactly. We can't. We can't be. We, what, what is that? Um, what is that? The, the, Look that? No, we we can't. Oh. We can't be um, filled with another spirit. Oh yeah. To, yeah. To possess. We can't be possessed. Exactly. We're already in possession. High five. High five. We're already in possession. The Holy Spirit possesses me. This is His tabernacle, right? You know, right. Right. right in exactly. Chunk. I'm God's right. possession. So that that hug. You see, you, so you can spiritual boundary and so that hug might be the difference between you bringing that person to Christ and not and so you, you might give a dollar or two or fifty but it's how they receive that if they, you know they're sensitive people are sensitive they're like oh he didn't want to hug me he didn't want to shake my hand embrace that brother you know we, we deal with homeless people all the time and we know because I've been homeless too I know with homelessness comes a lot of stuff that's an excuse for a lot of people that to be obedient to God and God says, if you see a brother in need, and he's a believer, you greet him with an embrace. You touch him. Then that will touch him way deep down in his soul. You might have a $500 jacket on, and he might have on a tore up, you know, whatever, sweat hoodie on. But you give that brother a hug and stop playing with this. You don't belong to you anyway. God will take care of whatever whatever dirt you get on you. And you probably got some old nasty cologne that he, he, he don't like anyway. <laughs> no, it's not. You, like, you ain't taking that up here to my gate. Ain't just giving it that. Yeah. that. But God, you, yeah. okay, go ahead uh, and if you want to. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so, so we are no different. Right. We are the same people at different levels of development. Ooh, ooh, I, I got yeah. it. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, when you said that it was this description that, that just touched my spirit. When, when, um, the Lord, ooh, I, I'm not going to be able to say it word for word, but the meaning of it, when um, people were like, oh, Jesus, I didn't want to, I don't want to touch him. And Jesus said, it is not the body that makes that person unclean. It's what is in their spirit that comes out of their mouth that makes them unclean. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. We got to get rid of all of this stuff we have. We're the answer to people's prayers. We're walking answers. Us. We carry the answer to a lot of people's ending, we do. Mm -hmm. And so here we are thinking that it's about us. It ain't about me. It's not about you. No. God just gave us what he gave us to attract those people. Right. You know? Right. You're you pleasant to look at. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we talk, we love God, and that's all you need. And, and the willingness at a moment's notice to be available and to be obedient because mm -hmm. sometimes you got to sacrifice your whole self on the altar of getting this thing done mm -hmm. yeah you might have to step out you know you might have been at this little dinner party and they're like oh that baby blue that she's so cute but she's on the radio you know and, and then, so you got your thing happening and you and you, you trying you fight you trying to suppress your flesh and then god says 
go over there to that woman in that mink coat and tell her that God loves her and wants her to stop what she's doing. And so then you're like, they're going to look at me like I'm crazy. Yeah, you need to sacrifice yourself on the altar of obedience and go ahead and do it. Believe me, it's going to turn out to be better for you than you could possibly imagine. Obedience is greater than sacrifice. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've done it so many times. They're like, you crazy, man, please. No, you crazy for not hearing. I'm sure he went through a whole lot of Negroes before he got to me. And I, hey, I, I, John, I'm just the one that would do it. Yeah. Right. John. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, what's that that hit me in the back of my head? Me, the Lord. Uh, no. <laughs> and then God is quick. God is God is like, he's like, never mind. Next. 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 Gotcha. That's why you got your, your Moseses. I mean, um, your Noahs. These people made themselves available. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man, not Moses. Moses was like, he, he would have ran. He'd have done a, he'd have done a, um, who the, who the child was in the belly of the well? He'd have done one of him. Jonah. She'd have done a Jonah <laughs> if, if he had gave him enough rope. Jonah said, Lord, I don't like him. Can you let him die? Look at him. Can you, can you believe him? Racist. Right. Racist. How can you say uh, that in all the mess that you went through uh, and I forgave you? Yep. And Racist. you want me to let them die? Mm. Uh, oh, I'm going to show you about yourself, Jonah. And you can preach revival. You're going to bring a lot of them to Christ. You're going to give them exactly what you don't think they deserve. <laughs> Sorry, Jonah. I'm, I know I'm going to see you one day, man. I'm going to remember that. I'm going to remember that. When you come up here, I'm going to remember that. <laughs> well, well, you know, I guess the moral to the story, this has been a great show. We talk about, man, just holy boldness, knowing that you're in his protection. You, you know, he loves you with a love that you can't even comprehend. We do our best to love him. And our best isn't even a nanometer of the measure of love he has for us. You know, and so if you, if you, wow, golly, if you have people with problems, it's not people, it's you. If everywhere you go, you got a problem with the people, it's you. And it's probably not pride or anything like that. It's probably your patience with people. You got to be patient with people because patience is love. Patience is love. That's it. That is a that is an attribute of love. Love is matter of fact. It says it says it first. Love is patient. Yeah. Love is kind. Mm-hmm. Every time you step on your block and. And old Mr. Willie roll up to you and need a dollar. And sometimes you find yourself going, oh, Lord, here come Mr. Willie. You need to either up a dollar or teach him something. The spirit of greediness. Or say, hey, say, hey look, man, I'm going I'm to go ahead and, 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 and hook you up, bro. But, mm-hmm. but the Lord is telling me that you're a powerful man in the kingdom. You're a believer, man, and you're living well below God's standards for us. We're kings, we're priests, we're priestesses, we're queens in the kingdom. We should live like they live in the world. Yeah. It's been such an awesome show. It's time for us to go. So, until